Right, let's go. Yeah, because I was told we were starting at six, and it's now six forty-five. I was hoping to be home by four, but I was home at five forty-five, so we can just chill the fuck out. I'm your host, as ever, Dan Rowley. With me today, Justin Cliff. Uh, hi. Ken Trainer. All right. And Antonio will be joining us a bit later. What's he doing? You spoke to him. Uh, cooking dinner. What's another one of those? I can't possibly be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't possibly be there early. So we've interrupted both your schedules. You're off to a, uh, a leaving do in Cardiff. Yeah, that's and right. And you're going to be replaced by Antonio. Uh, I was supposed to get home early and do some work for this, but but I haven't. So. Uh, Onward from your suggestion, mate. I'm going to keep it as conversational as possible. All right. Oh, how's it going? All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah, you said you're full up of stuff for this week, man. So let, let, let's go for it. I'm okay. ready this week in history, see? So what you got? So um, Nothing this week I've been probably. commuting quite a bit. Back and forth from Cardiff to Newport. Nice. Nice. Uh, you know, working and things. And I've been looking uh, through the metro every day. Oh, Neil Sean realized... has gone, isn't he? Yeah, he's gone. Neil Sean is completely gone. Yeah. Ken? Uh, how to live like a celebrity for free. Is that Neil Sean? Oh my God, so it is. That's what he actually looks like. That's weird. <laughs> Such a low resolution and shit when he was in the metro. We'll chuck a link up to this. How, like, how to live like a celebrity for free by Neil Sean. Oh. We've spoken about him loads in this podcast without reading out any of his green room. Yeah, I can't believe I, I haven't um, searched for my thought. I wonder what he was up to. No, he's not in the metro. Mm. And uh, yeah, that's, that's when I Googled him. That's one of the links that come up. Amazon. Writing books. Neil Sean was a guy who, who did a little, a, the tiniest section in the metro, tinier than the rush hour crushes, tinier even than the page number sometimes. And it was his like celebrity gossip where he said things like, Justin Bieber tells me he's looking forward to his new tour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Cheryl yeah, Cole yeah. fretting about her new hairstyle. Will they like it? She confided in a friend. Yeah, yeah. Fucking ridiculous. I, know, I, know. I got a couple of choice stories from a few different issues. So I think the last three days, basically. There were two rush hour crushes from the Metro I saw recently, and I don't think it's the best way to uh, to introduce yourself, especially if, if, you're, if you're anonymous. Uh, it said something about, you know, I saw you sort of drinking coffee on the Bakerloo yeah, yeah. line. Would you like to get some coffee together? And he described himself as man in long brown animal. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there man was, in long brown Mac. Yeah. Yeah. There was one I read the other day, Rush Hour Crash. Saw you trip over your exquisite shoes the other day going on to the, going on to the Jubilee line. <laughs> I think I can help with your dandruff. <laughs> yeah. No way. Swear to God, mate. No way. I don't think that's... A real one. Well, I, I hope not. What's your, what's your story, mate? What have you got from the Metro? All right, mate. Well, I think um, this is uh, in replacement of This Week in History. Good. This is, uh, technically, it is This Week in History because this stuff is, has all happened. Um, have you read all of the articles here? Have you? Yeah. Okay. I've read them all, I promise. Fantastic. Uh, so, I've got a few. I'm just going to dip into them randomly. This week, an owl is killed <laughs> for having a tiny penis. Elaborate. <laughs> I think this might be this more is, fun way is, to do it. If I if I give you the gist of a story and you tell me what you think happened, this is great. All these bits of bit of a crumpled paper. Yeah, you can look at the you. paper and circle the bits that you want. No, no the different I've papers. Had three papers. These <laughs> yeah, are you've, three you've different issues. Yeah, you've looked so pro, man. Coming in with three papers. Yeah. So all right then, uh, owl killed by other owls or by humans. Oh, mm-hmm. by other owls. Didn't satisfy his, the Mrs. Owl, so she killed him. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And Ten what they're man. saying that looking at the body of the dead owl, the penis is smaller than average. Well, this and this is and what I thought, they think, right? They, th- I thought they went. Mm. <laughs> yeah, he's got a tiny little little wiener. Um, I think this is why she killed him. I thought that, but it gets explained. Um, 
A frustrated owl killed her new mate because his penis was too small. Keepers at the animal shelter in somewhere, forest. Some shelter. In the northeast noticed the snowy owl, was unhappy and introduced her to a male bird from Germany. Two days later, he was dead. We took the remains to a vet who found his private parts were underdeveloped. That's it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was. I didn't think it was going to pan out to be that. No, but they, uh, so they, what did he, what did he die of? Well, it must have just like, hacked him to death. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, it doesn't. Hang on. Oh, Jay, what have you done? It it doesn't say though. It just. I mean, they say like that. That's what I mean. She killed him, but all it says is that. Yeah, they brought the mailboat from Germany. Two days later, he was dead. He might just pick. It doesn't say that she killed him. Yeah, but that's definitely why. Bullshit. No, it's not. Bullshit. I Read think... it, the, the, the headline. Yeah, it says, a frustrated owl killed her new mate because his go. penis was too small, but then it just says... It... No, I'm not out of that. <laughs> I think that's a lot of shit. Hey, mate, we'll take it up with the Metro, mate. That's, that's what I'm saying. Well. I'm not taking it up with you. I'm saying I think the Metro's full of... I think they've just made this up. I think that there was this one owl who was... and the keeper said, oh, she's a bit sad, so they got another owl from Germany, then that owl died, and then a vet said that the cock was too small and then they've just made up all this bullshit around it well it's basically they had a dead owl that would just be an owl a dead dying. owl has made the metro <laughs> that would just be an owl, owl dying why would you even try to that's explain that's the it? problem that I got with it mate I think just a, a dead owl. owl hacked up an owl because it had a time period <laughs> okay shall I give you the next article go for it don't trust the TV it could be listening. Oh, this is these Samsung TVs, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, I saw this story. I've got a Samsung TV. What's going on? Uh, so, walls have ears. <clears throat> At least those with Samsung smart TVs on them do. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. The South Korean electronics giant has warned people not to discuss sensitive information in front of its internet-connected sets, <laughs> which can listen to conversations. Oh! A voice, with, a voice recognition feature can pick up on what's being said and potentially send the information to a third party. Oh, dear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the warning is buried in the company's privacy policy. Campaigners are using the company to disclose uh, who will be using the information. It just um, proves it that no one, like, you say no one reads those, but mm. it's like someone's read it. It's taken about four years. <laughs> but, like, someone's yeah. finally got, like, trolled through it. Yeah. I mean, that's fucking nuts that's yeah that's really that's, that's really insane. harsh yeah brilliant it's I mean, like it says in here it's like George Orwell's 1984 yeah of course well then Ken you can write for the Metro I could write I could but I, could, but I wouldn't have said I know what they mean by saying it's like 1984 but it's not really no it's not alright got a bit of a dark one uh, okay uh, food that's pretty writer. dark the fucking the, the, the TV one it is actually pretty dark isn't yeah. it go 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 it's next pretty dark to me um, yeah, so this one is a food writer reveals last meal before fatal plunge. Before he jumped? Yep. Or fell? Jumped. Oh. Yeah. Go. A food blogger published details of a final meal moments before he fell to his death from a rooftop of a London restaurant. Uh, Wilkes McDermott plunged 80 feet from the Cock d'Argent rooftop terrace, where there have been several falls in recent years on Sunday evening. In his last tweet, Mr. McDrummond, 39, of Euston, Euston London, <laughs> fuck me, <laughs> searched a link to his Jay. blog writing, I'm, I'm terrible at reading that loud, mate. Final message, thank you everyone, was his yeah. last tweet. For an actor, that I is know. shocking. Uh, his post began with a quote from writer Samuel Johnson saying, when a man is tired of London, he is tired of life. He added, Johnson was right, I am not tired of London and have never been, however, I am tired of life. He later wrote, There seems to be a fascination with final meals online. Mine was a Hawksmoor Spitfields ribeye with a Donington Caesar salad, triple poked chips with lime pickle mayo side with a Colston Bassett Stilton with pears and walnuts. What would yours be? Just like an all you can eat buffet, I think. <laughs> I'd have loads of stuff. I'd have loads of. Uh, something like ham and cheese toasties but like proper awesome ones <laughs> how really would you, good ham and cheese toasties how would you awesome if I a ham and cheese toastie pepper in there um, <coughs> fucking hell mate butter, butter the outside but oh. bread with like proper butter that butter does sound like a bread. death row inmate when you're like no I made the best ham and cheese toast you can imagine what you mean pepper no <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you but, uh, warm, pepper, warm warm as well yeah <laughs> mate 
I don't know, just really good ham, good quality ham, like thick, honey glazed perhaps. Bacon. Bacon might be a good call actually. Mm. Bacon and ham and cheese. Four different types of cheese. Buttered, properly buttered bread on top. And then I'd have like 40 of them. <laughs> 40. <laughs> Do you know I tried the Ferrero Rocher challenge? How many, what was the, what was the Ferrero Rocher Nine challenge? in a minute. Yeah. Fuck, it's so hard. Like, it's, it's really They're disgusting, so difficult. I bet it is hard. No, they just take, if you don't know how long it takes to eat one, it probably takes a minute to eat one. I missed out our Hero of the Week last week, and it was a really nice one. So, I'm not sure if you saw the story, it was pretty horrific, about a guy uh, named Alan Barnes, uh, who's a disabled, 60-odd-year-old yeah. guy who was uh, beaten up outside his home. Yeah. There was a girl who heard about this, deeply upset, named Katie Cutler. And she set up one of the WeFund pages. And in five days, they raised four hundred and eighty-five thousand wow. pounds for the chat. Shit. All started by this one girl. So yeah, sorry, Mister uh, last week, but yeah, Katie Cutler, Hero of the Week. In two weeks, in fact, there's so many cunts of the week this week. It's oh, ridiculous. Mate, I've got a cunt of the week out there. Uh, the old metro. I have definitely been on a train. I'm commuting, reading about these. I'm still annoyed about this owl nonsense. I know. I'm just starting to think. Because I said like it doesn't say. It, it does say that it frustrated I will kill the mate yeah but it doesn't it doesn't tell you the method you, you want it in graphic details I want I want like yeah I want, <laughs> to, know, I want to know exactly how this one owl has killed another owl oh, wait, wait, is there an owl cam like, there, like all the cameras at Edinburgh Zoo we should find out yeah we should review it certainly there should be an owl Columbo oh, who gets down who gets down there and, Columbo. and so, Columbo. sorts this bullshit out yeah if it's a German owl, does it go D? Well, the, the, <laughs> la the lady owl. Right. That deserved more. I mean, the, it was in Poland, Ugh. so the lady owl might have been Polish. Coming over here, killing our. Well, no, he's German, isn't he? Yeah, I'd go for your life. <laughs> <laughs> revenge. Yeah. That's, well, prob that's probably what it was. Yeah, revenge for the fool. It's probably nothing to do with the size <laughs> of his. Probably nothing to do with the size of his penis. Probably just like German owl going to Poland. They were like, whoa, whoa, we're not having this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> You know what that we saw what happened is. last time. Yeah, well, we can all agree that because of the German invasion of the German owl invasion of Poland, that's probably how they didn't have. We had carrier pigeons, but they had carrier owls because of the cold climate. They had to have snowy owls. Pigeons would freeze to death. And the only way to get messages on one of them is just to staple it to it and chuck it. You can only get, <laughs> you get messages as far as you can throw or kick. <laughs> Do you think you could kick a dead pigeon farthest or throw a dead pigeon farthest? Uh, I think with accuracy you kick it further with a hand you can like levy it out of your hand as you throw okay but you can't you can't impact it you can't like sort of punch it away no, with a exactly. full force yeah. and I think you throwing it is more than impacting it okay but yeah no I reckon kicking it I reckon I could kick further than you could throw yeah but it depends what the object is dead pigeon we've agreed <laughs> alright well you've got to handle a dead pigeon mate I've only got to boot the fucker so I reckon I've got this <laughs> <laughs> no you'd have to pick no you'd have to drop kick it surely Hmm? Are you going to kick it off the floor? Yeah, no, yeah. one of those little tees that they use on the rugby. Those little stands. No. About the same shape as a rugby ball as well, a dead pigeon. <laughs> An inflated dead pigeon. That's mm. what we'll do. Okay. <laughs> Good. I don't know, man. That's the thing. If you throw it, when we find it, you kick it, it might just explode. Yeah, it might right? just fucking plop all <laughs> just yeah. Fuck, fuck, yeah, no, <laughs> that's totally right. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> no, never going to burst with a throw. You know but Oh, shit, I haven't. No, no. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. Half of it will be left on your foot. All right, can we have ball? Can we have rugby ball instead? We mentioned rugby yeah. ball. Can we do rugby no ball? No way. No, okay. but like, like Jay says, it depends what the object is, doesn't it? Yeah, it does depend what the object is. Like a pigeon, like the size and weight of it. Oh, yeah. You yeah. Get think about rough. throwing it more than yeah. kicking it. I'm not thinking about this object. at all. You'll if throw was... a paper plane further than you'll kick one. That's right. Yeah. Or, or something that weighs a kilogram. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that would break your feet. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I'm, done, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I've, I've jumped into this far too fast. Because of your shitty reading, I assume that you're an idiot. <laughs> Cunt of the week. All right, so this is Metro <clears throat> Cunt of the week. A uh, date is beaten for being fatter than her photo. An angry bachelor knocked his date to the floor and stamped on her because she looked nothing like her online profile picture. Hao Mao paid £5,300 for a five-hour flight across China <gasps> to see um, this girl. Uh, but when she came to meet him, he did not recognise the goddess he had boasted about to friends. <laughs> this woman had a fatter face and acne, the 35-year-old said. Mao, who punched, his, uh, who punched Miss Torn, 32, in the face and injured her arm, was arrested after the attack. But he was free to return to his uh, 
country after she decided not to press charges. She what is. an absolute bastard. Yeah. So another cunt of the week then. I had this sent from Cat in Australia. Ooh. Ooh. It's Cat what we know, so it's not that impressive. Have you heard about Brian Williams from NBC, the NBC News anchor? No, I think so. All right, he's been um, suspended or he's quit. He's taken a step back, I think. He's taken a step back because he, uh, he he's now part of the news as opposed to just presenting it. So Brian Williams said that... Uh, he did a Hillary Clinton... He came as under known now. Yeah, he came under fire whilst he was in Iraq. He said that he was travelling in a helicopter and it was hit by you know a rocket launcher essentially. Mm. And his story of uh, you know the, the the fear of it. And then this what, what week, do you think happened, Jay? What do you think? Take <laughs> care of this story. None of that happened to him. Oh no, he was certainly he was in Iraq. He was in a helicopter. Uh, but that that's as that's as far as the truth in the story goes. So what he said that the helicopter crashed and stuff and or he was like, no, he said he that he was, was hit coming to fire and he was just sort of but a lot of it was sort of praising the soldiers and their calm uh, nature under pressure but also his harrowing tale of this is how deep I am into the news this oh is, this is what God. real news people do and you know if I'm not part of it I'm just an observer and that's not what I can do as a news anchor I'm paraphrasing heavily and I've not read any of it <laughs> um, so yeah fuck come of the week for a, just being a liar I mean that one doubly bad. It's like the Hillary Clinton one. It's it's so stupid to to come out and say something like that when you know someone's gonna check. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's clearly. But then with him, it's doubly bad because part of the story involves being in this helicopter that gets shot down and everything, and you kind of think, well, you're still here telling this yeah, story. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And there are plenty of helicopters that actually do get shot down, even if his intention was to just big up the the, the military. He sort of trivialised people who were killed in helicopters that are shut down yeah. because he pretended that that happened to him great timing tone hey buddy all right we'll come and get you welcome tone how's it going all right yeah yeah gonna do a bit of a tag with uh, with you and Justin. i'm sure he's gonna yeah. bugger off in a minute don't worry dude well, he's been here it's been dreadful do you want to oh, do it with this i'm glad you what is that um yeah well, i've got to go in a bit but. all right well before you we do then i'm reading this story um from yesterday it was published about David Tennant um, being on Just a Minute. Oh, amazing. So he's become the most successful debut contestant on the Radio 4 quiz. Um, he made it through 60 seconds without repetition, hesitation or deviation. Um, it's the first time in nearly 50 years of the show that contestants made such a fluent debut. Um, yeah, so you're familiar with the show, the two of you? Just a Minute? Sort of. Dan, sort of. you're a big fan, aren't you, Dan? I love just a minute. You're given a subject about which to talk for one minute without hesitation, repetition, or deviation. So I'll say, Antonio, you have one minute to talk about fruit and vegetables, starting from now. Right. Well, so I have to start. I have to do that now. Bang! I'm going to go for deviation because that's not fruit and veg. Yeah. So then I a bit take of hesitation o- there as well. Hesitation, yeah. So then oh, I right. take over on fruit and veg for a minute, and the clock ticks down, and whoever's at the end of the minute while still talking wow, gets the point. Incredible. It's amazing. He that's was amazing. he was asked to talk about Shakespeare's stage direction exit pursued by a bear. Let's that's play great. it. All right. So on with the theme. It's time for just home minute. <laughs> Justin, you have one minute to speak about the Shakespearean stage direction, exit, stage left, pursued by a bear, starting from now. Uh, Well, famously, it was from Hamlet, um, and it happens in the second uh, scene of the play. Um, What Shakespeare? Uh, I'm going to go for hesitation at least three times there. Okay, stop in that. Right over to tone. Go. I'm not very familiar with this uh, this uh, role. But um, hesitation. <laughs> Stop. Ridiculous. Jay, start again. No. Shakespeare once said that a bear was to bear all uh, of your skin and your body and everything like that. So people often get it confused with the uh, exit pursued by a bear. Um, what it actually means is a, a naked maiden who would traditionally be around the age of sort of 15 to 17 years old, uh, often had red hair, and she would enter the stage after somebody had left, walk across just uh, totally 
naked and the audience would appreciate that as a lull, a little break from the performance. Um, so when Shakespeare wrote Exit Pursued by a Bear, many comedians since then, of course, have taken on the, uh, the subject and they feel it's humorous to uh, present the bear as a physical grizzly Oh, that's bear. done. Well done. Justin gets oh, the point. Oh, How does he have to do it wasn't too bad. You would have been ripped to pieces on the actual show, I'll be honest. We, we, we were generous to you. Yeah. Well, well done. I, was like, I didn't know that Shakespeare invented uh, streaking, essentially. <laughs> that's what you're talking about. Are you it? allowed to lie? That's no, the point, I don't think right? So. Well, that, all of that was a lot. What, to just try and like, la- like talk for longer. Yeah, that's yes. what he, I think that's what he, he'd be ripped to shreds on the show. Like, hey, this is clearly nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're going to keep that when you guys are here. Just a minute. All right. A couple more cunts of the week. Absolute triumphant cunts this week. Have you heard of Deepak Chopra before? Uh, I've heard the name. Okay. No. Have you to school with him? No. <laughs> I do not know. No. He's a bit older than this. He is a lifestyle guru and he claimed to, well, he claims loads of celebrity oh, clients. I know him, yeah. yeah. Um, but it's not just uh, lifestyles, it's not just how to live to the fullest, you know, in your material self. He's hijacked the word quantum in a lot of his writings. I'm not going to call them teachings at all because it's all horseshit. Quantum theory, ridiculously uh, complicated strand of science. Carl Sagan once said, if you think you've understood quantum theory, then you haven't understood quantum theory. So he uses this as what can only be described as a metaphor to talk about how we're all intertwined and our energies are at one. And if you could put yourself into a different consciousness, then things like disease, in this case, HIV, uh, could disappear or at least wouldn't turn into full blown AIDS. It's a (laughs) conversation that I'll chuck out between him and Tony Robbins. You must know him. Big chin, another lifestyle coach, life coach. Uh, yeah, them talking about being on different planes of spirituality, and different planes of existence, so that you could, so the disease wouldn't exist, and you could go back to your material form, disease-free. <laughs> like the level of shit is unparalleled. That they, they make it deliberately ambiguous when they talk about real scientific things as well, so that they can't be checked essentially. And it's fucking not only is it annoying, but it's genuinely dangerous to people who might have an actual disease and go, "It's all right, I'll just meditate for a bit and pretend I don't have yeah, it." Yeah, yeah. Fucking Deepak Chopra, Tony Robbins. <laughs> Cunt! Tony Robbins does an amazing yeah. turn in Shadow Hall with Jack Black. Mm. Yeah, he's a celebrity. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's famous for yeah, talking. Stephen Hawkins is a celebrity, mate. Yeah, but he, for, for, for things that he's done, not for standing on a beach talking to people who then have to buy a DVD collection that's worth $140 for the <laughs> small <laughs> price of $98.95 yeah, or yeah. three installments of $35. Uh, and stand on a beach and go unlocking your potential is as easy as thinking about what you want and then taking appropriate steps in order to get it fucking stand innovation yeah, and shit yeah, yeah. And he's like, all you gotta do is imagine what you want and then think about what needs to happen to get what you want and then do those things in yeah. order in yeah. the order that you thought about <laughs> then, yeah. then, you'll, then you'll get a Ferrari that's very good advice though yeah it's good advice but given some thought <laughs> <laughs> anybody would come to the same conclusion so just a, just a case of people need to be need to be told what to do and it's easy to have a structure especially the simpler the better put in place so that we know what to do or what do I do at this point it's why people consult fucking astrologers and that so they try and with their ambiguity try and give people some kind of framework absolute arse uh, on that note unfortunately I'm going to have to tag in and tag out alright cool let's hear the hand slap did you tell them about your good deed of the day you didn't have it, did you? Oh, man. Oh, well, Quickly, I've, get your good deed out of the way. I've got footage, yes. Yeah, so. Found a pram on the street today, just an empty pram. Oh, empty, right. Good. It was covered in a sort of chocolate and had lo- lo- loads of dirt in it and crisps, but it was a really nice pram. George said he thought the chocolate was blood. So he <laughs> well, decided to call the blood. police. So I called 101, the uh, Crime Stoppers line, and they told me to wheel the pram in, so I did. Yeah, yeah. But I wheeled the pram into the... Police station. But George, <laughs> but George, but George filmed him going and grab this pram. Yeah, she filmed the me street, going and, and getting the pram. Yeah, I got the footage on my phone. Excellent. Well, we'll upload that for definite. George filmed him taking it to the station as well, like wheeling it up the up the ramp <laughs> <laughs> to the, the main door. <laughs> where, where, where was it? Just in time, set up my phone, but. We've spoken about God loads before, Tony. I want to get away from that as much as possible, but stick with the supernatural theme as we enter the twilight tone. What do you reckon on uh, ghosts, mate? I was convinced they existed at some point because 
Well, I was convinced that I'd had like experiences and stuff. Awesome. Like, like um, that I'd made some sort of like I'd had some sort of um, contact with with them. Okay. Um, but I haven't felt like I had any experiences since. So since then, I kind of stopped believing it now, and I just. Okay. But I still can't. I still can't explain what the hell happened to me when I was younger. So the obvious follow-up question is, mate, what happened? Um, I was having this reoccurring, like, thing in during the night. Dream. Where I, I would wake up and I would feel like um like something was sat on the end of my bed and I would oh, feel yeah, like yeah. the pressure. Okay. All right, yeah, yeah. Against. Like the weight of something against my leg. There's a name for that. Sleep paralysis. Yeah, there's de- yeah. There's and a- I immediately would when I when I woke up in the night and I felt this, I would immediately freeze, like freeze up, mm. and panic and think, oh my god, something is that at the end of my bed. Were you, were you able to move at all? Um, I tr- I well, see, this is the thing. At the time, I thought I was moving my leg. I was trying to move my leg, and I felt like there was a pressure and I couldn't move it. Okay. But maybe not. Maybe I thought I was moving it, but because I was so scared, I wasn't actually moving it, and my okay. brain was making me think that I couldn't move it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. But at the I time, I was convinced I was trying to sort of tr- drag my leg forward, and and I could feel this like uh, force against my leg, like was pushing it back, and okay. I couldn't move for shit. Um, but this was only one of a couple of other experiences. This was something that happened quite often. Sorry, hang on. I, you thought a ghost was sat on you. Yeah, I thought there was a ghost sat at the end of my bed. How old are you at the time? Ghost, typically reckon, people think of them as weightless. So I reckon that's about 11, 11, 12. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Corporal form. Yeah. But I think, I think I had, I think I had similar ex- experiences when I was about 13 as well. Okay. And that's when it kind of started to fade then, when I was like, yeah, about that age. Because I think the last thing I experienced was when I, when I was like, yeah, 14 or something like that, probably. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, that was strange. Um, and another time I woke up in the night, and, and these are probably the, these are the ones that are the most um, easiest to sort of, like, disprove, I guess. When you think you've seen something, mm. especially if you're just stumbling out, you know, kind of stumbling out of, like, sleep. Because <clears throat> I just cut, like, stirring out of sleep, sorry. Yeah, I just kind of, like, stood in the night, opened my eyes, and thought I saw, like, a figure, like, walking out of my room. Um, and, and all I could see was the outline of a bold headed man <laughs> no one in my family was bald at the time my dad is now but he wasn't at the time along here and just the arm it was just the bald head and the arm and when I told my mum like because I sort of woke up in the night shat myself a little bit called for my mum she took, came in turned on the light and when I explained to her what I thought I saw yeah. she didn't tell me in the night because she didn't want to freak me out but the next day she told me that um, after the way I described it she believed it was her um, uncle uh, that died Right, so she because, told you it was a ghost. Because she said, because my mum's quite religious, and when he died, she prayed to him that he would look after me when I was like ill and stuff in hospital. Yeah. So she reckons that since that, since then, he became like a bit of a guardian angel of mine. So she was convinced from my description that it was him. So there was that. Ex- there was that experience. Crazy. That's but an yeah. excellent Twilight Zone, man. So anyway, for that, for those reasons, I used to believe in ghosts. You know, yeah, when you go on like school trips and stuff to like, mm-hmm. you stay in like a what, what everyone thinks is quite a haunted like old mansion <laughs> and stuff. Everybody you, will tell yeah, you it's haunted. Yeah, when you, you go have there. loads of experiences there, don't you? That you convince for weird things and people shit their pants. But I'm not going to talk about <laughs> them because I think you just do that happens when you're in. Yeah, people. I've heard people try and suggest, that, imply that it's aliens. <laughs> that, you know that there's like this deeper into the, the twilight tone we where, tumble where the whole you know where it's like we're all being watched and we're all like under some weird sort of like testing and stuff and shit loads of people have got abducted I think you like aliens don't you I love I the idea I think that's it. the one that you want to believe in oh, I love the idea of it I, yeah. think, I think well I think, I think out of all of it mate it's the most likely. likely that's the most likely isn't it though like yeah. to explain there's people that believe that these Stories, these religious stories where people have seen angels and stuff come yeah. down and speak to them were actual, actual things that they saw but that they weren't angels, they were actually aliens that were making them believe it. Have you heard of the Arthurian Society? Them? No. They believe that um, sort of Jesus, uh, Muhammad, uh, religiously, um, you know, uh, Buddha, yeah, first Dalai Lama, they're, they're aliens from, from like Venus, Jupiter, 
oh, and they're mad respectively. Like and other, yeah, yeah, no, wow. it's about separate types of consciousness. Is it? Is it? They're, they're a genuine society. That's I'll chuck amazing. a link up to it, man. That sounds like like fucking awesome. The best thing in the entire world. There was one. The only reason it, like, it's so fresh in the memories because there was one on a Sunday morning program called The Big Questions with Nicky Campbell. Uh, and I do like it. I hate it. I know you hate it, but it's I great. I hate that show. Sometimes I, sometimes I think this. I, sometimes I think there are really strange things that happen in the world, like really unexplainable things. But most of those things have happened in his. Apparently, happened in history. Mm. They don't really mm. happen now. You know, and funny it, that. And if they were happening, when we've now, got cameras and, and video yeah, recorders yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but then, but then I get, but then I also think to myself, are there things that are happening that just that people just don't share with the rest of the you know, with their friends or family, you know, are there things that we'll never know about that people have experienced? Like, are there, are there certain people that, that, that can connect with these weird experiences that, like, I don't know, like, because one thing, I know this is going to, this is a bit weird, like going, slightly going off the topic, but, well, I, I guess it's not going off the We're topic. We're all about off topic in the twilight you know, tone, But right? you know when, you know <laughs> when you think about, like, whether you believe in evolution and the fact that you know like there is no yeah, there is no believing in yeah. it or or you believe that there is something okay well the only thing that sometimes makes me kind of think something doesn't seem right is oh I don't understand with the evolution oh shit yeah awesome. well, the only thing I don't understand with it is why is it that we are the only ones that have evolved to the extreme to the extent that we have mm. in terms of like yeah the We've, Every, thought, we've uh, done this before. Every, we are, we? Everything yeah, yeah. that we're capable yeah. of doing, mm. like physically and mentally, and how we can build things, and how we can like we can be we can be in control of the whole yeah. planet, really. And we're above, you know, we 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 we're kind of like we're above um, all the animals. We're, you know, we could kill any animal we wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, we could. Like you know, like we, you know, that we are in control. What's one of your we facts the, the other day is that we're not top of the food no, chain. No, no, I know we're not top of the food chain, but we. We are capable of killing the yeah. largest mammal that okay. exists on the planet yeah. because we got the intelligence to figure out how to do it. Mm. Yeah, but what I don't understand. That's so what I'm saying is. But you know, you know, a slug is as evolved as. How you do. come it stops? How come it? How come there's no other um, sort of um, oh, it's fellow beautiful. species of some sort? Yeah. That is as close as we are in our evolution okay. stage. That we can sort of like work with. Yeah, you're, you're on about don't. why aren't there other sort of what, subspecies of yeah. human? Yeah, like why aren't we? Do you know how long evolution takes to, do you know how gradual the change is? We're talking about billions of years. But it, see, but that's what makes me think, do we just, do we, do humans just come from the same evolution process as all the anim animals? Or have we, are we oh. here for a different reason? That's I basically see. what I'm saying. But why attach reason to it? Why, why? We... Because it just seems like, <laughs> seems so incredible yep. of what we're capable of uh -huh. and how far we've come. Mm -hmm. yeah, like, why incredible. the fuck are all these other animals so behind? Like, why the fuck are <laughs> you fucking, fucking idiot? Why the hell are the fucking <laughs> like, shinnables and fucking like, they're, fish so behind? Like, they're not behind. behind. They? They're perfect for their surroundings. That's the point. That fish, yeah, but Why shark, should we be the only ones that well, can be in such control of, of everything? You're right. Consciousness is a magic thing. But because we've evolved to have it, We've evolved because of our surroundings. But it doesn't seem right. It seems like too much of a stroke of like real good fortune. That oh, it certainly like. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But 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 it's a bitch, though, isn't it? Being human sometimes, because <laughs> animals don't have to constantly fucking wonder on oh, what is the truth, why are we here, how oh. is this possible? Yeah. And we do because we've done that to that point where we question everything. Yeah, it's amazing. And that can be a real fucking ball ache. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> you wish that you were just a fucking cow, just walk around and feel the grass. That's right. Grass. Yeah. You know, like just. I've got to worry about whether or not you were a good steering, cow, whether you made any good moral decisions. Yeah. Steering yeah. at the farm every now and again. Is that what you'd be if you could pick an animal to be? No, I'd be a bird or something. Yeah. Or a bear, like I said before. You know, I like the idea of being a bear. You know, there's a lot of benefits <laughs> to that. Cause honey and fresh fish, baby. You know, so you're separating so humans yeah. away from 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 the animal kingdom. You think that like we're. Well, no, 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 you think. Sometimes I'm, I'm I asking find it really you. annoying and quite overwhelming that we are in such a high position on the planet. <laughs> but, but, but I think what's more annoying about it is that even though we are in that position, yeah, we're probably the biggest fuck up as well of the whole fucking thing. I wonder, like what you said before, like the evolution process is still happening. I wonder whether any anything else will ever be on 
in par with us, you know, like no, it's not. Or, you're not thinking. It, it's you, 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 the concept that you've got is is wrong. We're not evolving separately and at different rates. And like human isn't the perfect thing for everything to be. Orangutans and chimpanzees that have like 90, 90, 90 odd percent identical to us genetically have have adapted over time through natural selection of randomized changes in their in their DNA to suit that environment. They are the top. They're the best. We know a species is successful because it's here. Ninety eight percent of all species yes, have died out, mate. Yeah, but if we started out as monkeys No chimps. D- you're thinking about it wrong, mate. It's not that we started out as chimps. Chimps also evolved. It's a continuous process from a single celled no, organism to no, where no, we no, are now. What I'm saying is why there's still chimps that haven't evolved. Oh in. god! That's like saying these are these are these are these are good though, because there are answers to all of them. It's like saying Americans evolved from Europeans, so why are there still Europeans? <laughs> done. I'm still going to sit and wonder all I'm saying is I think there's a few chips out there that just look at us sometimes and be like why couldn't we evolve to like, you know to that stage why can't I sit in front of a TV and, and have a freaking fish and chips and you know and have a cup of tea whilst they you know because they're not thinking that not thinking so why the hell some of we, them are doing that mate, the, for like a cup of tea I've seen it on the telly why the fuck do we have to sit in these trees and wipe our asses with our hand and just eat bananas all day when they're fucking in there with toilet paper and bloody eating with forks and knives this is shit so why would they do it if they had that thought yeah. process they, they, just just they wouldn't carry them, on mate. I feel bad for them because I think they're jealous of us <laughs> so they feel like they've got the wrong end of the stick like god oh, they've sort of like deserted them at some point during the process and you know, oh, well, no, that doesn't make sense because if you yeah. forget God, sorry, right, fuck it, delete. Right, Ken, sorry, I mispronounced it. What, what's the society called? It's called the uh, the Aetherius Society. Damn it. What? Damn you, Nicky Campbell. No, no it says the Aetherius Society cooperating with gods from space. That is a hell of a tagline. Exactly. The, I mean, the, links, the links on this website are home about Dr. George King, gods from space. Healing and service, yoga and enlightenment, <laughs> location and events, shop. <laughs> They've got podcasts. It looks a bit, I don't know, Dr. George King, Dr. King's unique mediumship. Ah, uh, right, yeah, uh, no, 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 yeah, they do do a bit of that shit, yeah. This is another thing as well. If we evolve <coughs> so perfectly to adapt to our surroundings, and everything's stuff, why evolved. the hell? Think about how. Why the hell don't we have an innate knowledge of, of, of what is the actual truth? Why the hell are we even considering? Things like that. Why are we even considering there could be a God? Why do we consider spiritual spirituality when really we should just have a human? We should just have an animal instinct, mm. you know, nature in our hearts. We should just, we should know our place and we should know exactly what things are. Why are we even thinking that there's more to what there is? Because we've evolved to the point where consciousness dictates that we want to ascribe meaning to things. It is. It is crazy. It's amazing. It's it's well worth more thought. I don't know if it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is. Cause you're not going to get anywhere. No one ever does. Why do people? Why do? Why people are there philosophers? Think they, people think case? they've got somewhere. They write books about it and stuff, mm-hmm. but they still can't be 100 percent sure. Well, and and there's just too many freaking crazy theories going around. And it's like, unless you get enough people, unless you, unless you get shitloads of followers on board with your idea, uh, what was it all for? Nothing. Personal understanding, maybe. Yeah. If you're at peace with it, if you think, well, you, you just said as well that nobody can be a hundred percent right, but nothing can be a hundred percent right. Everything's got to be open to change. No, that's the most crazy thing about it is that you can never really know a hundred percent what is true and what is not. There's too much mystery surrounding well, everything. Like. That's subjective, isn't it? The Aetherius Society is an international spiritual organization dedicated to spreading and acting upon the teaching of advanced extraterrestrial intelligences. Yep. In great compassion, these beings recognize the extent of suffering on Earth and have made countless sacrifices in their mission to help us to create a better world. The society was founded in the mid-1950s by an Englishman named George King, shortly after he was contacted in London by an extraterrestrial intelligence known as Aetherius. <laughs> the main body of the society's teachings consists of the wisdom given through the mediumship of Dr. King by the master Aetherius and other advanced intelligences from this world and beyond. The single greatest aspect of the society's teachings is the importance of selfless service to others. The society's motto is, service is the jewel in the rock of attainment. As well as this, the society's beliefs encompass many different subjects, including oneness and the divine spark within all life, God is all, UFOs and advanced life on other planets, 
Prayer as a natural way of invoking and radiating spiritual energy. Karma and reincarnation. Oh, it's all getting a yoga bit Yoga philosophy and practice, including yoga breathing and the chanting of mantra. Mm. Kundalini, chakras and auras. Spiritual energy and spiritual healing. Psychic powers and intuition. Uh, enlightenment and yeah, cosmic consciousness. I'm going off it. The Mother Earth as living goddess. You've lost me. Holy mountains. I'm no, no, I've got life it. at other frequencies of vibration, oh. which are known as other planes or realms. I've got, I've got. Ascended masters. Uh, the do society it. does not regard itself as the one and only path to enlightenment or salvation. It <laughs> maintains that all the other great religions are simply different expressions of the one essential timeless reality that is the divine source. That's incredible because what they're doing is they're just trying to they're just trying to say that all the religions point to this one thing and that they're all linked. It's no. They're trying to just good idea because if everyone just <laughs> accepted that, there'd be no conflict between the religions because be like, no, we're like, no, we're all we're all we're all we're all aiming towards the same thing. Yeah, but are you are you a fifth Alien. level Arthurius uh, member or are you a second I level? Think, I I'm, think I'm that it's no it's no coincidence that it's in the sort of nineteen fifth that supposedly he was contacted in the 1950s in London yeah I think it's very um, it's very <laughs> contemporary in that in, in, in western in that you know that's sort of Eurocentric way of yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That the world is full of spiritual beliefs and it's, it's like a supermarket of them and it just like basically they just clump them all together mm hmm like going shopping God, in a supermarket. UFOs, <laughs> karma, <laughs> yeah, they put it all spiritual in one, energies, all in one thing. <laughs> frequencies of vibration. You know, it, it's got everything in there. Yeah. Basically, I can see if what you chuck in the word quantum as well, they'd, oh, have, they'd have the full bag. They would, yeah. And there's a shop as well, so they've got souvenirs, which is even better. Kind of a religion without merch. It might not be souvenirs, mate. Well, you can see what they're doing there. They're trying to answer my question of why is it that we even think about Sorry, it's quite read it out, mate. It's, yeah. the, it's and the aliens they, trying to draw us in, trying yeah. to take us back. Well, they are doing a job of explaining it, but I think a lot of them <laughs> will know that it is that it is shit, and it's like deliberately fictitious because the religions are linked. There's an inextricable link between, especially Judaism, uh, Islam, and Christianity. They're called mm -hmm. Abrahamic religions because they all believe in Abraham. So, and and their stories fucking mirror each other consistently. So they are linked, but knowing that and knowing the history historical and the, like the anthropological reasons for it is a much more interesting way of looking at it surely you're on about you not knowing whether something's true or not don't just describe it to anything just go well if it's all aliens and they're all linked yeah fuck it it must be something in it there's there's, there's real there's there's other proofs and other evidence you can look for that are, that are genuine can you look orgasmic i uh the uh, drop down tabs gods from space yep ufos and extraterrestrial life of course the extraterrestrial message yep the Mother Earth, God and the Gods, cooperating with the Gods, and evidence. Oh! There'll be a link up to this website, so please That's explore as you want. Any thoughts, email us, thelast7podcast.gmail.com, or follow us on Twitter, at The Last 7. You can also uh, contribute for The Twilight Tone, A Question of Tone, or Quantone Leap. It's a lot of Antonio focused segments in this podcast it's because you're my yeah, favourite sorry thing. I get well into the Aetherius uh, society I think we'll I think we'll I'll read a bit more and we'll maybe report back next week damn straight we'll smash that next week excellent bit of Twilight Tone theorising that one could time travel within his own lifetime Dr Antonio Romola stepped into the quantum leap accelerator and vanished he woke to find himself trapped in the past facing mirror images that were not his own and driven by an unknown force to change history for the better. His only guides on this journey, Ken Trainer and Dan Rowley, observers from his own time, who appear in the form of a hologram that only Antonio can see and hear. And so, Dr. Antonio finds himself leaping from life to life, striving to put right what once went wrong, and hoping that each time, his next quantum leap will be the leap home. You quantum leap into a death row prisoner. You're gonna be executed the next day. What do you have for your last meal? Guard comes to you, he's like, you know, oh, he says your name, you know, I'll call Antonio. And he says, Jim, big day tomorrow. We'll cook you up anything you like for your last meal. So what you fancy? This is going to sound ridiculous, but I would go for, for, it's quite simple, but I love it. But they'd have to let me make it Spaghetti and meatballs. Yeah, probably not. Probably not going to give you a knife and stuff, mate. I'll be. I'll be honest. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know, but I'd want it made the way I 
I made make it so, so you, like, I'm you, sorry but I want to make this meal because it brings me back to my childhood so please let me let me cook it all right, please that, just as uh, one last request no <laughs> <laughs> just as one last request because that would that happen yeah oh. <laughs> I'll be like well can you get my mother to cook it for me then please and she no. bring it over no no because we'd have to yeah we yeah. There's, there's no way it's going to happen it has to be yeah, we can order all the, any ingredients you want but it will cook by our, it will be cooked by our chef here Look, it's not, you're going to die tomorrow like, what's he like is he any good it's not, yeah. he's, he's, he's fine you've been he eating his food all the time you've been on death row and it's not your mother remember <laughs> they'd have to get your mum from wherever she is <laughs> yeah, yeah of course even, I don't want to make his egg and cress sandwiches alright that's all he ever makes <laughs> egg and cress sandwiches make you, beans on toast he's going to make you um, spaghetti and meatballs I'd be like, look, right, fine, okay. If you can't, if I can't have the spaghetti and meatballs that I want, well, you can, you can have it. You just can, can you make me a decent pizza? Have you got a stone oven? <laughs> you got a stone oven? We've got, we've got an oven that we can put a pizza in. No worries, we'll make the pizza. <sighs> so you haven't got the proper oven to make it. For fuck's sake. Where, where do you make pizzas? What in your stone oven? You ask me what I want. I'm telling you what I want, and you can't, you can't give it to me. Oh, and this is my last meal ever. <laughs> You sons of a bitches. Oh, well, you're not getting any last meal now because you're being, you're being belligerent, so, you know, fuck you. Try and get pizza delivered to the, to the prison. I'd be like, you sh- can you just get me a plane to, you know, m- my hometown? And well, no, so obviously can not. No, the- you're on death row, you double murderer slash child rapist. And, you're, and your hometown's <laughs> not your hometown either, is you're it? You're not. Because you're in the, the body of this guy. You're in Texas. You're a mentally retarded Texan, 18-year-old Texan they're going to execute. For crimes that <laughs> What about a stew then? But I want, I want like you know, particular ingredients. What do you want in yeah, the stew? No problem. Well, I'd like baby carrots. You okay. know, cooked whole in there. Small carrots. Yeah, I'd like you to put some whole grain mustard in there for me. Okay. Yeah, I want, I want Cypress potatoes in there. So Actually, what? no, no, change that to Italian new. Um, <laughs> scrapers. Uh, scrapers. <laughs> Some little parsnips, baby parsnips. Little parsnips, sorry. I want, I want French onions in there. Shallot, French shallot onions. Yeah. Yeah. I'll have some, uh, I'll have some dry chili flakes in there, just, just for, just for heat. Okay. I'll start one in there. Oh yeah, the lamb. Bit of lamb, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that sorted for you. Yeah, we'll get that on on for you now. Yeah, yeah no, you seem to be quite into your food. Maybe you should have concentrated on you know opening a restaurant instead of killing those children. <laughs> nice one. You know we're all gonna jizz in it, right? I've, I've been... Have a good night's sleep. <laughs> what would you have as your last meal? Yeah, we didn't answer that earlier, actually. Hmm? What would you have as your last meal, Ken? I'd have a word with some other prisoners, um, and we'd rise up against Antonio. And his regime. <laughs> yeah, but what would you eat, mate? <laughs> <laughs> what would you eat when you've done that? Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't. Um. I can only say one thing on this podcast, can't I? So I can only say muesli. That's right. Yeah. You <laughs> that's what I'm allowed. So. In, in truth, I think what most people would be like is sorry about me. Got an appetite. I'm, I'm, I'm about to get put down, though. Like, Good. <laughs> I, I, I can't even think about food right now. It's a happy meal, isn't it? Or a bear, like a, a Big Mac that's the most commonly ordered last meal Is it? on death row in America. Fuck yeah. off. Happy meal. Well, what, <laughs> sorry, I think it's a Big Mac meal. I think happy meal might be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, other than being a serial arsonist and a, and a, and a murderer of nuns, he, um, he loved irony. That's crazy. So they always go for like a fast food. Not always, but it's yeah. kind of, yeah, food that they really like and that they've been, that they haven't had whilst they've been inside. Shrimp. Shrimp. Give me some shrimp. <laughs> yeah, Bill Bailey once said he would have a pineapple and a stale baguette so he could make a, a sort of a mace and beat his way out of the prison. Wouldn't work. Well, there we have it. What would your last words be? How's he going to fix the pineapple to the... Eat the pineapple. The in, uh, the, eat the inside of the pineapple after it's been topped and then just jab it on. What would your last words be? Oh, no, that, that deserves some thought. That's right. You could sign off on that. You could sign off on, on, on one sentence. My last words would probably be like, please promise me this isn't going to hurt that much. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Just before, um, just before we get into this, the, uh, the Wikipedia page for uh, last meal, yeah, has a, a list of documented last meal requests. 
This represents the items reported requested, but does not in all cases represent what the prisoner actually received. Oh no, yeah, yeah, they, um, there's, there's a limit. I think there's like a $12 limit or something. What? Yeah, oh, it's really hard. quite harsh. You rarely get what you ask for. That is fucking harsh. <clears throat> In real life, of course, in Quantum Leap it was different. You could probably get about three or four Happy Meals of that, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the reason they pick it, yeah, yeah. You can ask them to put a different toy in each one. Yeah, just go on and go PF Chang. Yes, I complete that, the collection. Oh, I'm done. Oh, that $12 <laughs> all-you-can-eat buffet brought into me. What are they? Um, it's, it's very, very odd list. It's not an exhaustive list, it can't be. Okay. Um, but it's, it's by, it's, it's really strange because it's got like Europe. And it's got a guy, Charles Peace, who's a serial killer, who hanged in uh, 1879 in the UK. He had a breakfast consisting of eggs and a large amount of salty bacon. Peter Curtin, the vampire of Dusseldorf. Fucking hell. Yeah, he was a serial killer and rapist. He, he was uh, decapitated by guillotine in Germany in 1931. Fantastic. He had uh, Wiener Schnitzel, fried potatoes and a bottle of white wine. He requested seconds and received it. Oh, sweet. Um, yeah, seconds on the wine, just get mortal. It's a lot of them are like American serial killers who are on here. No, they might have been like, oh no, we're going to wait for you to sober up, boy. <laughs> Once you sober up, we're going to take you down. That's a good point, though, yeah. Just get pissed. Really, really pissed. Yeah, just, like, I, I don't meal. want any food. I just want fucking mm. three bottles of wine. Yeah, maybe. 12, I want 12 <laughs> bucks worth of moonshine. Like the strongest alcohol ever, so I'll go kill myself before I let the state do it. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> just Funny. in a corner in yourself. Happy as Larry. I wonder if they'd allow it, the alcohol, the excessive amount of alcohol before that. I doubt it. This is Thomas J. Grasso, he was executed in Oklahoma in 1995. Says he had two dozen steamed mussels, two dozen steamed clams, a double cheeseburger from Burger King, half dozen barbecued spare ribs, two strawberry milkshakes, half a pumpkin pie with whipped cream and diced strawberries, a 16 ounce can of spaghetti with meatballs served at room temperature. However, he issued a public statement complaining that he had requested spaghetti oils, not spaghetti. What the public statement was that? Was that his last words? Must have been. <laughs> Must have been. I said spaghetti, not spaghetti. I said spaghetti. Robert Alton Harris was executed in California in 1992. He had mm. a 21 piece bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. That's the shit. Two large Domino pizzas with no anchovies, ice cream, a bag of jelly beans, a six pack of Pepsi, and a pack of Camel cigarettes. The pizza was actually a tombstone pizza. <laughs> um, in the shape of a tombstone. Per Vernal Crittenden's orders. Crittenden worked at the prison and was responsible for dealing with the condemned prison, uh, the condemned person, sorry, before his execution. Well, you thought he just had a bit of comedy to proceedings. How gutted would you be if you couldn't finish, if you couldn't even eat half of what you'd asked for? Fuck no, it. No, I want to eat it. Yeah, why wouldn't you gorge yourself? You know what I mean? Lovely poo in the morning before being killed. Why not? Gorge. What have you got to lose some in that people, situation? Yeah, some people eat, like, fucking loads. Lawrence Russell Brewer executed in Texas in 2011. Two chicken fried steaks smothered in gravy with sliced onions, a triple meat bacon cheeseburger with fixings on the side, a cheese omelette with ground beef, tomatoes, onions, bell peppers and jalapenos, a large bowl of fried okra with ketchup, one pound of barbecue with half a loaf of white bread, three fajitas with fixings, a meat lover's pizza, three root beers, one pint of bluebell vanilla ice cream and a slab of peanut butter fudge with crushed peanuts. <laughs> his request was granted but he refused the meal when it arrived prompting Texas to stop granting the last meal request to condemned inmates alright oh, so it's just stopped in 2011 yeah I'll be damned oh my god again learning something brand new so that's harsh what they don't give him anything like that then any special kind of well certainly not a last meal request now fucking hell what Texas in Texas yeah. do you reckon they get a bit of time with like, a, like, like a couple of hours with their family or something or friends before they go Death row inmates are allowed visitors. I think they? that yeah. would be nice. They should do that. Mm. I think that'd be a nice thing to do. To just say you can. I have, think you can. You can I spend think people the do last visit. Day with your family and friends in, in the prison. You can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking that. You got. You got to get that clause in there, mate. This 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 prison you're running. Well, I think they should let go home for the day, and then just have like a few officers there, just sort of. What, following around yeah, following or, or, or save that effort and just and have money and public pr- money who's yeah. paying for these guys to fuck nah no, fuck that it's not fair it's not fair what would you like for your last meal Alton Towers I think one thing I would do is ask for the ask if I could spend my last couple of hours outside just so I could like you know, just, just take in a breath breath fresh air yeah. look at the sky one mm. last time yeah, 
yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be well, a no, no. I wouldn't want to be in a little cell staring at wall thinking nah, he shouldn't have done them shouldn't have done them rapes then <laughs> oh, no, what are you assuming you're assuming if I ever went on death row it'd be for rape Quanto Leap it's not you mate it's, oh, it's, it's, it's no, the body you, some other guy's already done it but you yeah, find yeah. yourself in a body <laughs> I don't know what what you've got to to do because obviously in Quantum Leap he always changed something didn't he that's right the first guy to, to fucking batter himself to death before like being put in death row <laughs> so I just like fucking start sn- smashing my head against the fucking uh, bars of yeah, the knock yourself out yeah, wake, wake up with a headache and and like, <laughs> I'll wake up just as they're about I'll cut, yeah, I'll get, just as they're about to fucking kill me I'll <laughs> get back into consciousness oh, I had this horrible dream that I was on death row Ah. So basically, we discovered. What about my last meal? Oh, you missed it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we discovered a few weeks ago that you were inept at murdering other people. That's right. But it turns out you're not very good at planning a suicide either. <laughs> no. Well, the thing is, how would you commit suicide in a prison cell other than fucking smash your head against the wall really hard? Just what about away? biting through a like? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, but the will it would take to do it. <sighs> Exactly. Gross. And what if you just like proper like fucking? You got your two fingers. You just fucking poked yourself in the eye, but really hard that your fingers went through, <laughs> and you just you hit your brain a little bit. So no, through, you, through your skull. Uh, I don't know. I'm trying <laughs> to think of different ways. Poke your eyes. So you think in your quantum leap, then this prisoner has to die it by his own hands to change some sort of law in the future. Yeah, because I was going to say you wouldn't be that yourself bothered. by just tying your trousers around your face like really tight. <laughs> If you want to die that much, you wouldn't need to bother them, would you? Because they're going to kill you anyway. Yeah, that's right. But no, his actions doing that would maybe improve conditions in death row for future inmates or something of that nature. Maybe, or they you've, were just like, actually, be, maybe you've just got to be nice to the priest that comes to speak to you or something. Yeah. yeah, and then you kill him, put him in your clothes <laughs> and go out dressed as a priest. You've always wanted to play a priest. Well, I've always wanted you to play a priest. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look maybe so priestly. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'd let a lot of people down if I was a priest. <laughs> In what way? Sound like you've resigned well, to defeat them. I just, you know, they might come for me for some real, like, humble advice on, like, you know, their last sort of dying hours, and, and I just come out with some yeah, the, shit that doesn't help at all. The guy on death row. <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. What, I, what would I say to someone if they're on death row? Don't worry, mate. There's, it'll be all right on the other side. Well, presumably, yeah. If you're yeah. a priest, you'd be like, yeah... God will this isn't you. the end. Yeah, don't worry. This you is just, just the beginning. Yeah, you say you say like they all do. Are you, are you genuinely sorry for what you did? And they'll say yes. And you then say, well, I am now. Yeah. <laughs> I will be in a minute. Yeah, getting caught was the real kicker. I don't think it's very comforting to have a priest there. Well, no, not unless they want it. Does everyone get, <laughs> does that, does that get a priest, or is it just people that believe in God that get a priest? Because you'd be fucking good if you were an atheist and you had to listen to a priest before going like. No, you have to. It's procedure. <laughs> He's just sitting here fucking talking my ear off. Okay, and you've of course got your last <laughs> priest request, so we've got a good we've got a good menu of priests here that you can choose from. <laughs> yeah. you while you're eating your pop tarts. Yeah, you get a guy from the Aetherius Society. Oh, to to you. that'd be loads better. In your prison cell. Are you truly sorry for what you did? Yes. Well, you'll be on your way to Jupiter at the five-star resort. I've got some pictures. Would you like a priest, here. a vicar, a rabbi? Uh, yeah. Ze- Zoroastrian? A Rastafarian? Jedi. Yeah. I don't want King Willy from Predator 2, the voodoo priest. Well, we haven't really changed history, but we certainly got a good insight into your mind through an excellent quantum leap. Uh, and we had an excellent Twilight Tone as well. Thanks so much for your input. And on that note... I'd like to thank my other co-participant for this week, Ken Trainer. Oh, thank you, Dan. One more for Antonio. Thanks very much, mate. Cheers. And ask you to email us, thelast7podcast at gmail.com or follow us on Twitter at thelast7. Yeah, thanks, Justin, for leaving early. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's a point, actually. We went through quite a few of them, but I reckon Justin's this week's cunt of the week, right, for definite? Just for leaving halfway through? Well, yeah, because what kind of cunt would do that? No, no. Well, I don't know, mate. He had, like, you know, abandoned push chairs to attend to, so... <laughs> <laughs> what, sort of, what sort of massive cunt just takes a push chair out of the street because <laughs> there's chocolate on it? Yeah, you, unanimous, that is. Yeah. Absolutely unanimous. And for that, Justin, you're okay, mate. Yeah, this week's kind of the week, 100%. Horrible cunt. Nice, man. Good to get that one. That'd be good, that one, if you, you end it on that. Yeah, yeah, Horrible definitely. Horrible cunt bit. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs>